What a way to start a sweet potato harvest. <laughs> How's that? Is that reason enough to grow your own food right there? Guten yardening, everybody. Watch this. Now, you probably couldn't see it, but I can see my breath in the air. And I just saw a bunch of frost on the ground. I mean, if there's anything that tells you that your growing season is coming to an end, it's that frost everywhere. Well, we've got a couple of days of 28, 29 degree Fahrenheit weather coming. I've got so many sweet potatoes still to get out of the ground here. So today I'm gonna to be harvesting this long raised bed of sweet potatoes. Now you may actually recognize this bed because we grew a lot of tomatoes in here this season. In fact, as I'm coming through here, I'm still seeing a couple of green tomatoes left on here. Ones that I should have brought inside already, but I just missed. And you know, when the frost comes along, it kills everything back like this. You can see these sweet potatoes are the, the leaves on these. Most of the leaves are now black. Kills all that back. And so now everything's exposed in here. Now, this isn't the only video that I'm going to be recording today because I've got some container sweet potatoes to take care of. I got some other stuff in the works for you. But this is the one I have to get to first. One of the things about this bed is it's the eastern side of the house. So we've already got sun on it early morning. So it gets that nice early morning sun. The bed itself is about two feet wide and it is 12 feet long. So we've got about 24 square feet. And one of the things I really love about this when I built it was this trellising that we have on the back. So we can grow tomatoes, cucumbers. We can really interplant some of these vining variety plants like this Amana tomato that we grew this year, along with our root crops like these sweet potatoes. Now this bed is an example of an experiment in companion planting. So we have our tomatoes planted alongside our sweet potatoes. And a good bit of the research seems to indicate that this might not be the best idea because tomatoes and sweet potatoes can suffer from some of the same diseases. But these tomatoes were really productive and we want to see are the sweet potatoes going to be as productive or are there going to be problems with our sweet potatoes? So that'll be part of what we're trying to determine as we go through this harvest video. Was this a good decision to companion plant with our tomatoes? <laughs> more Sheboygan tomatoes? <laughs> Look at that. Well, I'm not going to take any more time. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get these tomato plants cleared out and the tops of these sweet potatoes cleared out as well. Now we made this bed using cedar pickets and each one of these are about six inches wide. So we've got about 18 inches of growing medium in here. And when we first filled this up with medium, a lot of the base layer was sticks and other things that we wanted to go ahead and decompose. And so last season, which was our first season growing in this bed, we didn't do a good enough job of providing nitrogen and really just amending and fertilizing the soil in here. So hopefully with the progress we made this year and adding more of our compost and really trying our best to do a good job fertilizing, we'll see a difference in terms of production. Now, you know, I'm not one to wear gloves, especially in a raised bed harvest because our raised bed mix is really good. It's not gonna be that hard to dig around, but it is 34 degrees Fahrenheit right now. My hands are cold. <laughs> I'm wearing gloves. All right, let me show you this really quickly. We used these stones this year to label all the tomatoes and varieties we had in here. Just a nice black Sharpie and some smooth stones makes a really good label. And the same thing here then for the different varieties. So we're gonna start with our Beauregard sweet potato here. So we have a rock telling us what each of the varieties we have in here is. So we'll be able to see which one performed the best. All right, I've got this area cleared off here for our Beauregard sweet potatoes. And while I was pulling up one of the tomato plants, I ended up pulling up one of our sweet potatoes as well. Not a very big one, but hey, that just came up uh, away from the slips. So I'm gonna start over in this corner and see what kind of Beauregard sweet potato production we got. Now I've talked about this before, but we've grown sweet potatoes in raised beds more than we have in ground. And the rationale behind that is just the ease of harvest. Take a look at this. Do you see what I'm uncovering right here? Look at this first one. That is gonna be fantastic. Oh, what a way to start a sweet potato harvest. Now I have no idea what production is gonna look like in here. Remember, we didn't do anything in this bed to protect against vole damage. So I don't know if they made their way in, but what I do know is with this first slip, <laughs> the first two sweet potatoes that we pulled out of here are fantastic size. I mean, if this trend continues, wouldn't that be an awesome additional harvest? Oh, look, there's another one right down in here. And I can feel it 
every single one. Oh, this looks like it's attached to the next slip over. Every single one of these though, so far, looks like a great size sweet potato. You know, part of what makes growing sweet potatoes or any vegetable in a brand new space for the first time interesting, in my opinion, is trying to see how well they perform because we got to start looking at overall productivity and determine if that's something we want to continue if that process is something we want to continue in the future does it make sense to keep planting in an area where we're getting poor production versus an area like this where we're getting better production when the ease of harvest for example is so much better in a bed like this Again, growing in ground, we've seen some really nice results, but we've also seen some less productive results. All right, here's the first bit of vole damage in here. You know, with that hardware cloth that we used on our purple sweet potato bed this year, we had such good results. I'm thinking I could easily add that to this bed before we plant sweet potatoes in here, which I mean, based on this production, we could plant them in the other bed as well. The other one, we have two just like this, two beds just like this. And then that might help reduce any vole damage and we'd just be able to dwell on these really nice results. Some of these sweet potatoes are down here like 13, 14 inches. If I'm growing in clay right now, I am struggling. But as is, this is like the easiest kind of harvesting. I mean, I think you can see, look at this. I'm just, I'm just moving soil out of the way. It makes it so easy to get in here and excavate all these sweet potatoes. And then because it's a raised bed, I can just keep pushing the, the mix off to the side. This really is the easiest kind of harvest. And as long as we get good production, I mean, what's to stop us from growing sweet potatoes in a bed like this next year? I absolutely love this. You know, the plants have been in here for just over a hundred days. We planted these slips from ones that we purchased online. I am on to the Centennial. It looks like this is a Centennial sweet potato. So I don't know if there's gonna be a mixture here between the Centennial and any more of our Beauregards, but I guess we'll see here in just a second. Yeah, these are definitely the Centennial sweet potatoes. They have more of an orangish skin to them versus that beautiful red skin that we had for our Beauregard sweet potatoes. You know, I asked the question, ooh, look at this one. I asked the question in the last harvest video of what color was your favorite sweet potato? And a lot of people said they really liked the red sweet potato. Now those Beauregard are a beautiful red sweet potato with a nice orange flesh inside. Now again, you never know what production is gonna look like Here's some vole damage on this one. You know what, I wanna show you what the inside of this Centennial looks like. You see that nice orange flesh in there? This is a really, really tasty sweet potato. Now, for those of you who've never tried any other types of sweet potatoes, you are missing out because each of the varieties we grow here have their own unique taste to them. Oh, and their own unique texture to them as well. And so I think that's something important to remember. Well, this one just broke apart, but one thing I'm noticing about the Centennial is they don't seem to be as consistently big as our Beauregards, but we're still getting some production in here. If you had to pick one vegetable that you thought was the most versatile, what do you think it would be? Let us know in the comments. Because from my point of view, sweet potatoes are right up there. Looks like we got another Beauregard right here. Wow, that's another nice one. One of the reasons why there's kind of a mixture here of varieties is because a couple of slips died and we had to come back through and replant in here. And we just planted with the slips that we had left. So that's why you're seeing the Beauregard and also seeing some of our Centennial. And now it looks like we're moving over closer to our Georgia Jets. Well, this one has a little bit of splitting. It looks like a little bit of damage here, some moisture damage as well. Now, it's good that we're getting these out of here. I mean, we couldn't wait anyway because of the frost coming up. Wait till you see the sweet potato I just uncovered right here. Look at this Georgia Jet. Looks like something strangled it a little bit during growth. But that is a beautiful sweet potato. Our Georgia Jets have a little bit more of a consistent shape, or at least they typically do, in comparison to a lot of our other sweet potatoes here. Oh, here's another nice one. All right, this is a Centennial. This might be our biggest Centennial. Oh, by far. That's a wonderful Centennial sweet potato right there. 
Oh, there we go. So there you go. This is our our Georgia Jet right here. Look at that single slip production. That includes, oh, there's another one right here. This sweet potato as well. So you get all of this from one slip. That's nice in a raised bed. I wanna show you something here. This is the bottom layer. You can see how it's getting a lot harder right down in here. That's more of our native soil in addition to all those sticks. So we've got about 12 inches of this other medium in here that's a lot easier to work through. And I would say the sweet potatoes don't have a hard time growing in here. It's just making sure we get a nice consistent fertilization. That looks like a vardaman sweet potato. I don't think we're to the vardamans yet. So again, when we came back through, we added in the sweet potatoes that we had left, the slips that we had left. And that's why you see the mix there. That's the typical shape for our Georgia Jet, just usually a little bit bigger than this, but that nice, oval kind of shape. Again, the size of these right now, not exactly massive, but we're still getting good production. Yeah, this definitely looks like a vardaman to me, a smaller vardaman. That's the only bush variety that we planted this year. It was the only bush variety that we bought from taterman.com. The rest of these are vining varieties. And interestingly enough, the Vardaman variety, which is a bush variety, which is, well, there we go, which is the, the smallest of the plants, is the only one that suggested that it takes about 115 days to develop. The rest of these are about 90 days in terms of the time needed for production. So it's kind of interesting to me that the smallest plant takes the most time. Well, these are some nice ones right here. I can feel it. Let's take a look. Look at this, ooh, I love to see that. Well, I'm disappointed that I just did this. I just broke off two of our vardamans here. They're gonna be long ones, there's gonna be more in there. They're not all that thick. I was just about to say that one of the things I really love about growing in this type of material is that I don't have as much breakage. Oh, this is a really nice group. Okay, that's our biggest Georgia jet so far. That's a thing of beauty. All right, when it comes to eating sweet potatoes. Do you prefer one that has that stringiness to it? One that's starchier? Do you like the really sweet sweet potatoes? What is your preference? Let us know that in the comments. I mean, I personally like one that is nice and sweet and I don't love a lot of stringiness on my sweet potatoes. You notice I've taken my, my glove off. I can't come out here and not actually touch the soil it's, it's, it's getting to me <laughs> there we go look at these yeah and there's the vardaman right there the vardaman seem to be as i'm seeing them here these seem to be longer and they, they they didn't fill out as much but some good eating right there check this out look how easy this soil is to move come on let's get in here this is it <laughs> This is it. And this is why we grow our own food right there. That is a vardaman and a half. A little bit of vole damage on this end, a little bit of splitting, but look at the size of that sweet potato. And I know I felt more on this same slip. You never know. I've said it once, I've said it twice, I'll say it again. Not all slips are created equal. Now, anytime I see a stem that's this thick, I start thinking that there's probably some decent production down in here. And I feel, oh, oh yes. Oh, I feel more, hold on. Oh, one of them came detached. Look at this. Let me see if I can pull this up. <laughs> How's that? Is that reason enough to grow your own food right there? Come on, that is beautiful. I absolutely love uncovering these. It's kind of like, how long are we going to have to dig down here to see how far it goes? Look at this. Let me zoom out so you can see this. <laughs> I'm still digging. I'm still digging. Look at that. This is a great sweet potato right here. Right there. Compared to my hand. That's what we want. Every single bit of this is what we're looking for. We're almost to the edge here and I am thoroughly excited to see what's left, but I'm having a great time. If you're enjoying this video, go ahead and give us a like. Leave us a comment too. Let us know what you like most about sweet potato harvests. Well, I see a little bit of vole damage here, but what I have to say is 
it's really minimal considering we didn't do anything to protect these beds from voles. I haven't had all that many. There you go. You see this the stone labeled vardaman kind of covered in dirt at this point. But I haven't had that many sweet potatoes ruined by the voles. So, you know, if we add that little bit of the hardware cloth, I think that's going to be a deciding factor here. But I really like the way this bed has produced so far. And I'll also say this soil isn't nearly as cold as I thought it would be at this point. So my fingers aren't freezing <laughs> the way I kind of anticipated they might be. Oh, there we go. That feels pretty good right there. Let's get this out of the way. Yep. Okay, right, right here at the end is actually where I'm seeing the most vole damage. You see how they just eat everything in here? And actually right here in the corner, I saw what could have been a vole nest. So it's not actually that surprising to me that this would be the spot if I was going to see more damage that it would have happened. But they left the rest of the bed alone for the most part. And there are still some really nice ones in here. Another nice one, I tell you. The vardamans looked a little sparse at the beginning, but they're producing really nicely. I've got some nice sweet potatoes out of here. What's that right here? Oh, yep, right there. Well, this is the last slip. Now our first slip produced really well. Let's see if our last slip follows the same course. First slip of the harvest, great big sweet potato. Last slip of the harvest, it's cracked, which means we're gonna eat it quickly. But that's a nice sweet potato. Let's see if there's anything else. Got a nice thick stem to it. There's a second one right there. Oh, yes. Okay. Love it. Let's get in here. Let's get it pulled out. <laughs> that may be the most productive slip in terms of all of these being a nice size. Hey, we start well. We end really well. Take a look at that. Hey, before I show you the full harvest here and what we got, I want to show you another little treat. I have no idea if there's going to be anything in here, but let's check it out. We have this hanging basket right between our two raised beds here. And we grew some cucumbers in here, but we also put some sweet potatoes in here. I'm going to take this down and see if anything developed in here. I have no idea if there's going to be a single Ooh. <laughs> I think there is. I think there's a sweet potato in here. Oh man, this soil is so much harder to work through. Well, the roots are making it hard to pull out, but I can see we grew sweet potatoes in a hanging basket. Here, look, here it comes. <laughs> hey, you have any hanging baskets lying around? Something like this. Grow some sweet potatoes. Don't need a ton of space for these. This is a bush variety right here. Grow it in here. Look at that. This is a vardaman sweet potato. Doesn't spread as much. You get a little bit of beauty while it's growing and then eat the results, huh? That's awesome. All right, let's see what we got here. These are our Beauregard sweet potatoes. They look great. I'm going to say that our Centennial sweet potatoes, even though we had a couple really, really nice ones, they were the least well-producing. Our Georgia Jet were fantastic. I love these Georgia Jets so much. But I think after a slow start, our Vardaman had the most consistent and larger sweet potato. Now, I think this is pretty cool. We've got some trends that we're noticing with the various varieties. Our Centennial, and at the point that this video is released, I don't know if you'll have seen our other harvests yet or not, but our Centennial is trending in a direction that lets me know that that might not be, for next season, the variety that we go to. Because, well, you'll have to check out our other harvests to see what I'm talking about. Well, now that that harvest is all said and done, I have to say I didn't see any ill effects from a lot of our sweet potato slips companion planting them with tomatoes. So I'm not willing to make a recommendation one way or the other, but it seems like this time around at least, the experiment was a success. Well, folks, if you did enjoy today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.